All right, Anais was, uh, uh, I, uh, your book, Suzanne, was originally a bestseller. In, uh, it, it, it's won all kinds of award, awards in Quebec. It's sort of being introduced to the Anglophone market. It's already a, a, a huge presence in Quebec, uh, and it's based on the life of your grandmother. Can you tell us a little bit about Suzanne Meloche? It's new in my life that I can talk about her. In fact, um, Suzanne uh, left my mother and her little brother when they were really little. And uh, even if she was alive, she's still alive when I, I was there and I grew up and I just tried to have any contact with her, but the door was closed. And so for a long time in my life, she was just someone that yeah, who hurt my mother. You told a little bit about her before, but so I just hated her. She was a ghost and I, I was a bit afraid of her. And then she died. And that was the beginning, that's the beginning of the book, in fact, because that was the first time where I, f I was invited in her place because we had to empty the place and through her absence, through, through her, the, the, the smells, the objects, the books, uh, the letters. I just felt that I was for the first time meeting my grandmother and and then I realized that it was my responsibility to complete the portrait I have of her. She was not only the one who left, she was a woman and a complex woman and an inspired woman. And just for the little story, uh, so the beginning of this book is linked to her death, but also to to life because I have three kids and my last, my third kid is uh, the first girl. So I, I wrote this book when I was pregnant of my first girl. And it's really, um, well, it's not in the book, but it's important to talk about it for the process because, because I felt that for the first time I needed to fulfill this emptiness in my uh, yeah, in, in the life story of the, the woman. So it began with a really personal uh, um, story. Uh, but then I realized that my mother, uh, my grandmother was, um, was a, an avant-gardiste, you know, she was a, a free thinker. She was totally stuck in her, her the, con the context of her life. And so she broke all the moral square that that the other person built around her and and she she chose to be i i cannot say that she she chose to be happy but i can say that she chose to be free and um, and uh, it, i'm still surprised about how i've begun to write this book hating her and i i at the end i i have to say that i love her so spoiler alert, she loves her in the end. Uh, <laughs> it's not a spoiler alert. Uh, but it's, you know, it, uh, it's, it's a story with so much emotion. And it's so intensely personal to you, as you say. Yannick, what, what drew you to something that well, was... Well, I, I want to say something about resentment and hatred. My therapist used to say, resentment is like swallowing poison and wanting the other person to die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Makes no sense, right? I think we all <laughs> owe that therapist a couple of bucks. <laughs> Everybody went, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, forgiveness is a big thing in life. It, uh, when we don't, we get stuck in the past. And that's the power of your journey in the book and discovering your grandmother, for me, anyway. And uh, my dad left when I was two, never saw him again. So very similar to the grandmother. And I've always wondered, how can you leave a child behind? How can you go on with your life and be happy? And wow, what a great life I have. <laughs> and you have a son and you know. And so I very much understand her quest to understand that woman. Rhonda, I wanted to ask you what it was like to translate such a, a already beloved uh, piece of work from French to English. What was that task like? What do you feel? Were, were you up to that? Um, 
yeah, it was it was some pressure because um, the book really was very loved uh, in in Quebec, is very loved in Quebec, and um, so when people found out that I was translating it, I was this was probably the book that people approached me most about. Um, People have very strong feelings. Uh, uh, some feel compassion. Some felt tremendous anger. Um, but basically, I'm just uh, following Anaïs's lead because she wrote it with such um, uh, sensitivity, gentleness, um, emotion, and so just sort of trying to even follow that was uh, that was sort of the the path for me. I think. And when you say people felt anger, not at you for translating the book, uh, they no. felt anger. Uh, on, on whose behalf? Well, angry about uh, that, that a woman would leave her children. Oh, right. And yes, sometimes that anger did get expressed right at me in a, in a book club uh, once. It was sort of, I had 12 people telling me how this horrible woman and why didn't she go back? And I said, well, first of all, it wasn't me. And second of all, mm. I didn't write it. <laughs> so yeah, there was, there, people were kind of upset by it. But that's really interesting because this character, um, Suzanne, well, my grandmother, um, some people, they, 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 they love her a lot. They, they feel real compassion and they understand her quest of, of just of, of freedom, of choosing her, her own dreams. And other, they just, they are so shocked and they cannot uh, forgive her. Um, so, but it's interesting that the same character can generate so different kind of feelings. Mm -hmm. Yannick, uh, last question for you. Why should Canadians read Suzanne? Powerful writing, powerful storytelling, forgiveness. I don't know one person that doesn't hold a grudge about something. <laughs> we all do. We're all stuck in our own little story. And this book shows you that if you would put a little time in understanding the other pr point of view, the other perspective, that most of the time you will end up having empathy, understanding, and it recreates energy in your life and with the people in your life. And I think it's a profound human lesson personally. And so that's why I think people should read it, because people should get over it, <laughs> whatever they're angry about. More therapy for us? More therapy. Yeah. Huh? Uh, thank you, Rhonda and Anais and, uh, and Yannick. Let's give them a nice round of applause.